while I was in college, like Google was my dream job, right? Yeah. And everyone used to call me like Google Prasna in college. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember that, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, Google gave me like a bag of goodies, like T-shirts. You know, everyone who wants a Google T-shirt comes to my room and gets it. <laughs> so I was like almost synonymous with like Google yeah. back in college. Yeah. And by the time I graduated, you know, I had grown out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I turned down Google yeah. to go work at Microsoft. Right. You know, they just paid me like a lot more. Right. <laughs> I think that would have been the only parameter back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it was the top paying job at that time. Like, so I was making $100,000 a year. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that seemed, you know, that's like nothing today, but like it was, it was like crazy yeah, was back insane, in the days, yeah. you know. Um, so that was like, you know, I, I, I sort of like sat back and realized what the f- like, you know, my dream yeah. that I thought was my dream yeah. for the longest time. Yeah. I'm turning it down now. Yeah. In a few years, I've outgrown it. Yeah. So that was like really mind-blowing for me. And that was super confidence-inducing. Fascinating. You know? Um, and then, you know, I went and worked at Microsoft for the first two, three months. Like, I worked like crazy. Mm. Um, you know, I wa- you know, I, was, I always thought that I was special. Like, you know, I was um, going in, like, lots of energy, young guy out of college, you know? Um, I remember the day I joined Microsoft, like, like the week I joined Microsoft, there was, um, there was a, um, there was a production issue. Right. Microsoft was trying to launch like uh, the Bing crawler that was being built, and it, it had like uh, it could they couldn't launch it because it had its performance was really poor. You know, if you if you launch it like that, like you will sort of burn like tens of millions of dollars, right? Um, and I was like, okay, okay, you know. Uh, uh, and the, the my manager was sending my manager's manager was sending a mail that uh, this is the only thing that matters. This is what everyone everyone should work on. Right. And uh, by the time I was in sort of onboarding program, I wasn't even like expected to write anything, write any code or something. You know, that night I decided like you know I'm going to fix this tonight. Wow. <laughs> right. So I sp- you know um, I spent all night like you know spent the first hour like setting up the code base. Right. You know. Um, and like I didn't understand anything. Like I didn't understand right. what was going on. Right. But I profiled it, and I knew, and I knew which lines of code we had an issue. And I worked, you know, all night. And like in by the morning, I sent an email saying like, "Hey, I think I fixed this. Like this is the profile. This is the PR. Like you know, um, thirty line, thirty different files got changed, and right. this this is the fix. Right. And I felt insanely proud about myself. Right. right. Um, <clears throat> so that was that was exhilarating. Right. Like. You know, everyone was like, who's this kid? Who's this kid that just showed up? <laughs> so I, I felt super special. And, um, you know, um, and then what actually happened was that code to get checked in, it took six months. <laughs> you know, by month three, I'm totally checked out. I'm like, this is not the place for me. Yeah. The biggest fear of my life has always been, and, and it continues to be, that my peak is behind me. Um, and that was my fear. Wow. Um, you know, so it was like, you know, what's the point in waking up? Like, right. why do anything right. at all? So I was chilling for a while and then I decided, okay, like this doesn't work for me. Yeah. I need to do something. Um, you know, I, I need to make big bets again. Right. And, uh, you know, um, originally my thought was like, maybe I'll just freelance, set some top coder problems one day a week. Yeah. And then, you know, just do projects that I enjoy right. uh, for the rest of the time. You know, right. like I don't need much money to live. Right. So maybe I'll do that. Um, and that's when I came across Paul Graham's blogs. Mm-hmm. And that changed my life. You know, so he was, he started at a similar point himself. Yeah. You know, he was freelancing and just living off of it. Right. You know, and then he sort of came into this idea called startups. Yeah. Where... Instead of freelancing one day a week for the rest of your life to pay for the other five days of the week, yeah. what if you collect those one day across the entire life and re- just refragment your life right. so that you pack those one days of work into four years or right. five years right. and then chill for the rest of your life, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that refragmenting was very powerful because um, it created nonlinear returns, yeah. you know, uh, you could uh, you could just compound if you just like compound interest is a very powerful force indeed and if you can pack a lots of years of your life within a short period of time um you know you can create a lot of value 
right. and a lot of wealth. Right. 